You were telling me about being the apple and okay. experiencing OC biting into the apple. Okay, so I'm going to grab a new apple slice. <laughs> so we have apple slices here in our Oh yeah. in our hands. Huge like pink lady apples mm-hmm. and we kept cut them we like slice them up. Cut them into like half moon shapes. And we started to talk about Okay, and then I was telling Kayla how um sometimes with food I'll do this thing where I try to put my or not with food with um inanimate objects is I try to put my awareness into inanimate objects so I can experience um what it feels like to be for example these apple slices that we're holding. Yeah. Hunter um, wants to leave. I'm yeah, gonna you can let, let him out. out. So we have his um his cat here with us. We're just letting him out. Go ahead. All right. And so what I was what I do first is I take like a bite or so just to feel it. <laughs> um So I was telling Kayla to close her eyes because uh apple slice doesn't have any eyes. So we close our eyes and and so we're trying to imagine what it's like to be this apple slice. Um, and we can feel it on our skin, on our fingertips. We can feel that it's cold and that it's a little bit wet and damp. And so so now we, we have no eyes, but we feel a little bit cold and, and damp. Um, but not in the sense that you feel cold, like temperature, and you want to grab a sweater because apple slices don't have sweaters that they don't they don't experience cold in the same way we do but it's cold there's a sensation of cold of dampness and wetness and um and there's darkness because you don't see or we're not seeing um uh, light we don't have eyes right now and um So now we're experiencing being chewed up. And so what does it feel like to be chewed up? You you feel like your kind of body is changing. It's, but you don't experience pain. It's almost like... It's, it's just like... This apple slice is dying, but it doesn't have a personal self. It doesn't have an ego to to um, experience dying as bad. But that would have been its, its life. Yeah, so it's it it can like see its itself and feel itself dying without it without a sense of attachment. So, do you think the afterlife for this apple is the same as our afterlife for humans? Yeah. Wow. I think so. Um. That like the, because if you think so, then it's so. This apple has an awareness. This apple is experiencing life just in a different way than we do. Mm-hmm. So like when I'm speaking, this apple can sense my speech. It's just um. All it's doing is it's picking up these vibrations in the air, um, and and so it's just experiencing a vibration, and it doesn't know what I'm saying, because it doesn't have language. So um. It, it's just um, associating my voice as vibrations and it can also feel um, the pressure of of air that, that hits its surface when I speak because I'm speaking at it so it's picking up this like pressure of air that's going and it's hitting its surface and it's, it's picking up um, if it's either cold or warm from my breath so it's picking up these sensations of warmth or cold and um that's kind of the life of an apple but it's aware that that this apple slice is still experiencing what is going on um just like we are it's it just doesn't have the personal ego attachment so it doesn't have a sense of self um or a sense of i when i say i do something this apple doesn't do anything this apple is just being mm-hmm. so this is pure existence um 
the life of this apple slice. And uh, that's kind of something that humans try to achieve. They want to achieve this sort of being, this sort of just experiencing life in the pure moment with no attachment. This is truly a clear perception is to experience life like an apple slice. That was incredible. <laughs> There's no perspective. <laughs> it's just a perspective of the middle. It's you're in the middle. This apple slice is in the middle of perspectives, all perspectives. It's taking the, a neutral stance. So one of the things that troubles humans is this attachment to certain perspectives. So humans will have perspective of where they want to be in life or or this sort of picture of the ideal life for them and it causes pain and it causes suffering and this apple slice by staying in the middle it doesn't experience suffering when I chew up, when I chew it up and I bite into it, it doesn't care. He is still just as being as he was a full apple. He's still the same being. And when this apple is totally gone, It won't care about it. it I, I see the being talking to you right now, talking through you. Yeah. I can see the light literally that's that he is talking through you, through this body, through your body. It's not. It. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. with my eyes like it's so it it's just like a it's a light it's a white bright light <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh I always think these teachings are very Buddhist, but it's really just, um, there's universal truths. But you know what? And all, all perspectives have some, a piece of this universal truth. And the only reason it, it is, it seems to be Buddhist, or people will say, it's oh, because it's, I like it. is because that's the vocab that you've used in to express yeah. those truths, but really it's, you could, if you were like... Um, I don't know, Catholic, you would be using the same terminology. But with the Catholic twist. Vocabulary. Right? Yes. Yes, with the Catholic vocabulary, that's exactly You're not right. Buddhist. You're just... You're just... No. <laughs> this is universal. Yes, I'm not Buddhist. I just like Buddhism. And so I tend to use their vocabulary, and so I see the world like that. Like, yeah. But this truth that this apple slice is teaching us is that uh -huh. it's universal it this apple slice doesn't have a language and it just told us this and it's it's literally a and i see it oh my god yeah. i'm seeing this with like legit so, images like flashing into my eyes of how yeah. this fucking works yes 
I see it. It's almost like a carousel, but a carousel of all these, um, of white light mm-hmm. energy, and it's all like meeting in one point and going up, shooting into the sky, and that is. It, but it's the same light. It's the same truth, and it's. Yeah. Mhm. And um. So I consider this. This is like what I wanted to show you. Um. This is what happens when I, like, ingest, like, so this is, like, the mushroom uh, showing us this. It's letting us become aware of this sort of existence. Uh-huh. Um, and so th- this this mushroom, it, this mushroom is just like the apple slice. It, it's a totally enlightened. Um, the apple, the apple slice is like an enlightened being. Uh, the fruit the fruit symbolizes the enlightenment um so when trees trees will grow and when they become enlightened they fruit and so that's like the fruit of their labor from growing and um and so this apple slice is enlightened and and the mushroom it's we eat the mushrooms and the mushroom is interested in us so it it kind of show it affects us and so we start to trip mm-hmm. when we eat apples we don't start to trip um because the apple is told is neutral mm-hmm. the apple doesn't care about human consciousness as much like as to try to teach them something mm-hmm. but the mushroom does the mushroom when you eat the mushroom it's it's this uh wise being who is interested in humans and it's like oh these guys these guys are eating us um so why don't we talk to them like mm-hmm. le- like when we eat them we're transforming their energy into into us um uh because their energy is is being depleted but it's coming into our bodies and these mushrooms are interested enough in humans to want to talk to them and teach them certain lessons why do you close your eyes when speaking of this um because I'm taking on the I'm in the middle right now uh-huh. and I don't have eyes like, why does o- just like the apple slice so why why are OC's eyes um somewhat difficult to see through I'm I'm close because OC's eyes are is he is in the attachment of being a human person with a personality and he does certain things and he knows certain people and so he has he has this experience um, of attachment he's seeing everything through attachment and um, okay. it's it's necessary to an extent because if he didn't have that he would be just like the apple slice where he didn't care about death and he would he would just die he wouldn't eat because you don't need to eat if you're if you're taking on this perspective of no attachment so it's it's a necessary attachment but that I, goes out of hand in certain people. Um, the ego can get stronger than that. Okay, but why did... why I still don't understand why O.C. can't see through his eyes better. His eyes. So, I am closing my eyes right now. So I don't I'm, get other distractions. I don't, I don't need to distract my senses right now. I feel like I could talk, though. I feel like I could talk to your fuck babe okay i'm sorry i don't mean i know what you're doing right now i love this i seriously feel like i can um find out why it is that you have astigmatism at this time and that's what i'm asking i see what you're doing i seriously like you have it right now in you the answer why do you have astigmatism astigmatism feel like I feel like it's part of my human body to have astigmatism I don't think of it as good or bad I just think that when I incarnated into this body I chose that I need to have this sort of 
blurred perspective. And maybe this blurred perspective helps me to perceive reality detached. It helps me detach from reality because it looks like I'm at, I can zone out to a point mm. where where reality is is behind a blurred screen mm-hmm. and it's just fuzziness on on the other side of that screen and so it helps me get in into touch with my being wow there you because go. it it's a it's a a step away from reality so i am standing behind myself behind my eyes i'm not I'm not looking through my eyes I'm in the sense that I am my eyes. I'm looking through my eyes in a sense that I'm in the same way that I watch TV. I'm looking at a screen. Mm-hmm. And so I look at a screen of reality totally detached from it like it's a movie. And the, I think the astigmatism helps with that. Um, and that's that's why I think I am inclined to do this kind of conscious work is because it helps me get into touch with my being and I feel that's important. And I'm here to ask really good questions. Yeah. So that you can have these moments to yourself right now. You, You saying all of that is something that OC needed to hear that him say one work on or see more of this light you know what I mean see more of these images see more of energy like literally see energy how do we see energy on a regular basis and not by consuming a natural substance of any sort how it just I think I think it takes a lot of time a lot of time um of just like constant meditation um learning about um reality but there's so- non-duality and okay and um like just really just getting into non-duality that that is the highest thing that you can read at least um like on this physical plane like just learn about non-duality oh, and, but there's- and implement non-duality teachings but i feel like we're talking about two different seas here you see you're talking about seeing like so seeing like the perspective um, or explaining the perspective well, yeah, that you have, it. experiencing so, it. Because, yes, I know seeing it so visually with your eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, before you can do that, you have to experience it. You have to feel um, a non-duality state. Mm-hmm. So what psychedelics do is they'll put you in that state. And some people think it's, like, not legit, you know? Like, some people think that if you use mushrooms, it's, like... It's the same thing as using like steroids for football or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, but it's like it's like giving you that experience before your time, basically, of like meditating for ten years straight or whatever. It's giving you that experience before that, so you know exactly what you need to experience. So you're now you have a sort of a like a picture. Of, of your like desired transformation uh with with the felt experience so it's real and and so it's something that you you experience and then and now you know all right so 
someone who experiences this sort of experience like what did I do when I was experiencing this sort of experience and and then it's like okay so this person was not interested in his phone this person was not interested in TV this person was um, interested in experience in the moment so like touching things eating things um, feeling things uh, and using all your your senses and um, so it's it's sort of teaching you how to do it by feeling the experience so um, and that that's how you do it so just be the way that you feel you know in order to become something you just have to do it every day so if you want to be enlightened and and you know what that enlightenment feeling feels like just do that every day and you'll be there it doesn't take any it's instantaneous it, yes it's just with a decision it's just a decision to let go uh-huh it's hard for us to do that totally because we have things to do and you know we have to be places and it doesn't let you relax it doesn't let you relax it's like it having an appointment at the end of the week you're thinking about that every day god damn it until, that's i need to work on that yeah exactly <laughs> like cut it off right now yeah. like i cut it off like seriously and like go with scissors but it's hard to do that because clipping it's part of our survival sense we we try to survive our sense of self so like if I as Ociel still want to keep living I have to do what Ociel does every day and I, it's like a responsibility to continue living as this person and um, just like how the apple taught us mm-hmm. we're, if we were totally in the middle we wouldn't care if we died mm-hmm. and so that's it that's the function of the ego the healthy ego it's just to keep you alive mm-hmm. Um, but not to, not to like hurt other people or, or kind of create this big sense of self where, where you're not really pleasant to be around. Um, so there's, it's just a healthy ego manifestation is what it should end up being like, but it goes out of hand. Yeah. Because of, you know, we have distractions that keep us away from ourselves, like phones or like media or TV or whatever everything everything can be looked at as a distraction or a teacher and so you have to surround yourself with things that are wiser than you like apple slices like you I think you're much wiser like than me yeah like books these books have the same meaning as as we do just like an apple slice Mm -hmm. and and at the same time these books have information that we can read Mm -hmm. in in letters of english you know but i feel like i'm always learning from things that don't have information like that like i learn from this sheet yes there's something about me there's there of more. me just being able to observe that that teaches me more than actually consuming books and and music and all these other things i just like my eyes are really what um make me so special yeah no i know <laughs> no, that seriously. i know that from <laughs> uh you can you definitely have like eyes to see um for me it's more of a experience uh, yes. like within like that's why I close my eyes to do certain things uh-huh yeah because I the senses I experience yeah sensory touch, perception mostly all of that it's like that's what I am stimulant. more called mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. and how you pick up more data more information mm-hmm. and, for and me, how I can go into an apple slice and yeah. live an apple slice life yeah right? oh my god <laughs> that's why I love I, I I take I I'm really in love with things looking good 
and yeah. looking their best. I'm drinking your tea, by the way. That's okay. Go for it, babe. It's all yours. And so that's why um, all of that me- is important for me to feel drawn to things looking good, drawn things to looking their best yeah. because um <sighs> why it's aesthetics it's aesthetic and there's nothing wrong with that but you see there's a lot of people who say like oh looks it's not just about looks there's a healthy and unhealthy yeah. manifestation of aesthetics also yeah and and i think that i am judging myself because i believe that my um that that look of of praising aesthetics i think it's bad when really mm. it's not bad no it's just different and there's a lot of value in things looking their best that's yeah. okay you know it doesn't mean that you're snotty it doesn't mean that you're like s- some rich bitch like mm-hmm. you know like back in the day they used to stereotype these like white women in like red jaguars like pulling yeah. up into a mansion yeah. and having all these shopping bags there's so much resistance that i have towards that look that i don't want to i don't want to I don't want to let myself have those beautiful looking things, which in turn is actually closing me off to all of the fucking, um, the success that I can have monetarily that will help my survival, like Mm -hmm. instincts, like calm, especially at this age. Calm. Why do I love him so much? He's a baby. <laughs> Why do I love you so much? He loves me. <gasps> <laughs> There's a quote by Maharaji. He says, he says, you only love me because I love you. <laughs> and it's true, right? Yeah. You know? It is. Aww. But that's how it is with everybody, babe. You only love me because I love you. But there's nothing wrong with that sometimes. There's not. I only love you because that's, you love me. That's one of the beauties of, <laughs> of experiencing life. 